Okay, Council, I think we can reconvene. I think we're on to, up to item number 10.3, right? Letter of Support for Innovative Housing Initiative. Matt, do you have coverage for us on that? Yeah, I'll look to uh, Kelly to backstop me here. So we had an impromptu meeting that Kelly, myself, the CAO from both the town of Bassano, Newell Housing Foundation, as well as Cole, the chair for Newell Housing, and Irv Mori, the, the mayor, attended with John Brown Architect and the Brenda Strafford Foundation, a couple of their VPs of various business lines there, um, to kick around the idea of a collaboration and submitting an application to the continuing care capital program for a small care home pilot project. Details are scant. The intent of that original meeting was to see if everybody wanted to play nice in the sandbox and collaborate. And everybody kind of confirmed that, hey, yeah, we think this is worth taking a kick at the can, whatever that ends up looking like. Um, so some of the questions that came up were, you know, would the Brenda Strafford Foundation expect that they would operate the small care home? And likewise, would the Newell Housing Foundation expect, like, is there a hard line? And there were no hard lines drawn yet. So pretty good initial meeting, not a lot of details out of it, but I think the next steps would be, and actually following our meeting, we toured with John Brown Architect to one of, well, two of the units, one that was under construction. I sent you some photos of what these things look like in real life. And one that is being lived in and is in the backyard of a, a senior in Calgary. Very nice units, full of all kinds of high tech. Uh, from the flooring that will cushion you and prevent you from breaking a hip to horizontal lights that help you orient in the middle of the night when you got to get up and use the loo. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool units. So what we're looking at, everybody agreed to go back to their boards and see if there is support at the council and board level for administration to keep working together. The idea would be to get a uh, design, figure out what an operational model would look like for, for these things, the number of units. So the continuing care grant programs, I think from four to 14 units. Um, the Brenda Strafford Foundation is already moving forward with, uh, you'll see a few attachments in the agenda with the project. So you can kind of see what these things look like in real life. Uh, benefits of this type of construction is it's, done on site and then plug and play. You can expand, you can take these things apart. Uh, the model that you see that the Brenda Strafford Foundation is going on has all of the units facing inward towards a common area where they'd have dining, shared kitchen, uh, things like that. Um, what have I missed here in the capital program? Re Oh yeah, so background there. This has been ongoing for a number of years. So John Brown Architect and the town of Bassano have been working together for a number of years. If you remember, there was a, it was called Fab Homes at one time. They were looking at doing a seniors development uh, next to the community center. That never got off the ground. Um, so that's where the, the contact uh, came from John Brown to Amanda. Uh, CAO at Bassano saying, hey, we're looking at this for Calgary, but we'd also like to deploy a pilot project in a rural environment. Uh, Brenda Strafford Foundation, John Brown is Dean of Architecture at the University of Calgary. So they want to get out to a rural environment and conduct some studies, do some research. Um, so it might be a cool little project could be complementary to some of the work that we've been advocating for, uh, for seniors continuing care out there. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're just looking, there's more questions than answers at this point in time. Uh, what it ends up looking like is to be determined. Any significant 
uh, decisions that need to be made through the process of working on the application would come back to the county. Uh, each party is going to bring their strengths. So John Brown, the architect, will bring planning and design. Um, I'm not looking to be too involved in in things. I think what the county can offer is we're in a great financial position. So if we need to find some leverage to uh, finance these things, council might consider down the road. Uh, similar to what has been done in the past is using some of your debt capacity for seniors housing. So we borrow a venture for them. You collect payments through rent uh, over time. So that's where I would see you could potentially get involved. Um, level of care. So whether it's SL one, two, three or four is to be determined. Um, the Housing Foundation is currently working through a an updated needs analysis. We expect that at the end of July, so that will be very valuable in informing uh, the application that goes forward. And there was was a note I made in here. The original deadline for getting an application in was the end of August, and I understand that that has been extended. So we're not in as much of a panic mode to pull things together, but. Uh, things will be progressing if each of the councils and uh, the other boards agree that it's worth spending more time on. Thanks, Matt. That's good. Uh, Kelly and then Amanda, right? Kelly? The only, it, Matt touched on it right at the end there. The only thing that I was going to add is this grant application, which has been written seemingly for this project. It's um, something John Brown has been working on for a number of years and advocating for, and now this grant application has become available. Um, it's um, innovative um, and it's attached to um, research at the U of C. So um, there's those two components that are imperative, and then the rural part is the third piece that makes it very um, innovative um, or very appealing to this grant application. And then the other thing is um, the proximity to the city. We're an hour and 15 minutes. Um, we're gonna be attracting, if this project was to go forward, we would be attracting staff from all over. Um, but Brenda Strafford brings that, that ability in the work that they're already doing. They're operating three facilities in the city, plus one in Okotoks already. So um, it's this motion um, does not tie us financially um, to any dollar amount. What it does is allows our staff and uh, um, gives mobilization to next steps of inquiry. Okay, thank you, Kelly, uh, Amanda, and then Neil. Um, it doesn't say, but are these units movable? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I knew the fab ones were, I wasn't sure if these were, thank you. Okay, thanks, Amanda, Neil. Yeah, I think we should get really all over this, like nothing that was just described is anything but less than fantastic as far as I'm concerned, because we're, we're in an area, we can't really run out and do subdivisions and build houses, but we can free up houses by doing things like this. We we need housing and uh, no, I think it's fantastic and it would help the Zen. I would agree. Neil, Amanda, again. And the land has already been donated. Yeah. It's, it's just yeah. sitting, it's ready uh, to go. I think the other thing that has been indirectly said, but it, or maybe not explicitly, but I, my understanding is John Brown, it, as the Dean of Architect, uh, and University of Calgary, he's working on leading edge technology for caring for seniors. And, and, and as such, I think the notion of a, of, a, of a pilot project is pretty positive. With leading edge uh, application, I think you don't get that opportunity that often. I know that Amanda Peterson is very excited about it and she was when it was offered to her. We, we, she talked to him about, about it at a meeting I was at, at a rec board meeting not that long ago. So, yeah, I think you were, yeah, you were there. Yeah, Kelly. And, and um, <clears throat> so I agree. Does somebody have a motion? Uh, great. Uh, I just have a comment. I, I think 
what better place for a rural uh, pilot project like this than Bazano, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. And um, in saying that, yes, I'd like to make that motion to, mm -hmm. to uh, whatever the motion is, proceed with this or, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 give support. And working. And working with this. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Any further comments, questions, all in favor, please indicate. That's carried, thank you. Let's move on to item number 10.4. No, 10. Yeah, 10.4. Uh, Councillor Compensation Review Committee, is there any report or just looking for a, oh, Holly, please. I was going to say that I think we all deserve a pat on the back because a lot less um, changes all the time. I think after a year and a half, we're finally getting the hang of this. And uh, and thanks to the Compensation Committee for all their hard work. It's very appreciated. Okay. It's of acceptance of whatever it is. There are some exceptions, but go ahead. Who's, who's next? You, that's what I was just going to say. My name will be up there next month, but I'll, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Neil? No. Okay. Uh, motion to. You did make the motion. Thank you. All in favor, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. Committee reports. We have a number of committee reports presented, and I have a list of some others that are going to be. Uh, Happening City of Brooks Parks and Recreation Board, Greg and Neil. Do you have a report, Greg? Um, yeah, um, just a bit of a report. Um, you know, it was a very short meeting, but um, there uh, we saw the mock-up design of the new dog park in Brooks, which is quite interesting. It'll be on the north side um, uh, between the highway and um, Harwood Ford. So that was quite interesting. So um, there's a piece of land there that really has no usable use. So they're going to turn it into a, a park for dogs. And that, hey, that's it. Thanks. Any questions? Oh, Lynette. What's interesting about it? Do they have some different concept to a dog park? Yes. Attractive to dogs. Okay. <laughs> Paths and some things for the dogs to do. Yeah. We'll move on. Ready to move on? County of Newell uh, Library Report. Lynette, is that you? That's me. Um, so do you want me to do all of mine at once? Like, got a few things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so the County of Newell Library Board, we their provincial funding has all come through and it's all been dispersed to the libraries and made everybody happy that they get their extra amounts this year. Um, also to bring up that we are still looking for reps from divisions five and 10 and eight as well. Um, there was talk that maybe we should put that into the community little blurbs in the paper that might get, draw a little bit more um, notice. I don't know. Uh, okay, then the next thing was, that's pretty much it for County of New Library okay. Board. Um, short grass. Um, we had yesterday, we had a learning session and a lunch and it was with library managers and any of the library boards in our short grass area. Um, in Medicine Hat, we had it at the short grass office and then afterwards we had our board meeting. Um, so the learning part was put on by Public Library Services Board out of Edmonton, I believe is where they come from. And what they were talking about was just basically roles of boards and how to stay in your lane, basically. Um, okay, that's about it for that. And then new recycling, we, we as a council had talked about the Alberta Recycling Council um, conference and we had a discussion about that at the last new recycling meeting and I guess it's kind of a overpriced um, information session um, and about the only thing that would be of any interest there is the EPRs which 
is already like that's the producer recycling, right? Where things go back to the companies that make them. And that was all covered at the Alberta Cares Conference in Strathmore in, I believe that was October that I'd gone to that. And just a little report, I went to the Medicine Hat College convocation. Um, there was really no way of knowing which kids were from this area or not. And they had it at the co-op place. So when they let everybody out into the concourse was just an absolute melee of people. So it was it was it was nice to be there and note it or acknowledge that I was there for the county, but that's and that's all I got. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Ellen, please. Lynette, was that in um Brooks or in Medicine Hat? Medicine, Medicine Hat. In Medicine Hat, and they did it at Co-op Place, so that's the big arena that the uh, Tigers play at, right? Two weeks ago tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, joint services, great. Oh, question, so go ahead. Sorry. Just for Lynette, I just thought of it while you were talking. Um, has um, Recycling received their money Okay. Yes, they have. It was a little late, but no explanation why. Okay. Thank you. Great. Joint services. Um, okay. So joint services we met and um, we had a presentation by a couple of the school boards. Uh, Grasslands wasn't there, but we had our Grasslands uh, meeting, uh, meet and greet and, and supper prior to that. So, um, okay. So Christ the Redeemer was there. Uh, they are full to capacity um and uh the ecole french school was also there and they're half capacity um so if any of your kids are of french blood by all means look into uh sending your kids there yeah and it's a public and they get public school funding so just wanted to let you know that um we received an economic update from Mitch and um, yeah, all's good there. And uh, the highlight was the Federation of the Egg Journalists, which we talked about a bit today and we just got the update. So that's uh, that was where the big, uh, big things on joint services. I don't know if the other guys, or actually, is there anything else, Kelly, that? Dr. Okay. Curran, was Dr. Curran attending? In yeah, the we'll, again? we'll, yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks. Any questions? Seeing none. Thanks, Greg. Mayors and Reeves. Uh, no, we'll have to come back to that. Um, Newell Recycling Association. You did that, right? Uh, Newell Regional Waste Management Authority. Neil. Yeah, I've got a couple here too, but we'll start with that one. We've had complaints out there about. Uh, the landfill not taking pesticide herbicide jugs that is not the landfill's fault it, there's a company called clean farms who deals with the pesticide companies and so anyway if you get complaints send them to ufa send them back to south country because the, the landfill does not take those jugs and it's a provincial legislation the, the landfill makes bags available big bags that hold 35 jugs each, promotes it. And Sean, uh, we got him to phone UFA. I phoned UFA just to double check it and they didn't know anything about the program. So we got the Metastat manager involved and then Sean was gonna follow through and phone all the distributors throughout the, the county. And they can edu educate their own people right when they sell the stuff. So if you do have complaints from farmers, it's nothing to do with us. Thanks, Neil. Kelly? On that topic, Neil, though, um, can we not, as, um, as a company, make that available to farmers if, we, if your board agreed to that? Because clean farms will stop anywhere to pick up. And so why can't our landfill be one of those pickups? 
I was on the board when Clean Clean Farms was created, yeah. and it came from Central Alberta, and that was part of the agreement was that they would stop wherever uh, they were called to pick up. The information given us was that Clean Farms has to make a deal with theirs. It was more the education thing about it, like when the farmers pick them up, they have to know that Clean Farms is going to come and pick them up somewhere and get them back there. And if UFA takes them, they have to make a spot on their thing or Lakeside or Nutrien or South Country. Uh, actually, Sean just said uh, we don't really have a spot for them and it's not our responsibility. Uh, I, that's the way it was left. Neil, isn't it technically, and I might stand corrected but i think i think that you're supposed to take them back where you bought the jug so so well, actually the way it is you're supposed you could take them to any dealer and they all have to take they all have to take all of them they all have to take for the way it was relayed to me by the guy from ufa and medicine that was that just take them to a dealer and clean farms will pick them up but more you know normally i guess back to the one where you bought them yeah I, one of the things I would, I would question, and we can't change it here, but uh, that, I, I know I've had people say to me, why, why do they want to change this again? Because like out in our, uh, what do you call our site, um, transfer station, people were bringing them there, they got managed and then they got picked up. It was a place to go. It was the shortest place to go with them. I think that and I realize this is a provincial initiative. This is not local to the county, but it, but if it's not serving our agriculture producers very well, I think we should challenge it and and say, you know, there's a better way. Let's let's find a better way because these things are all coming out from town, and then they all have to go back to town, and then they're all going to go somewhere else again. I, I it's an exercise in transportation. Uh, I think there's some unnecessary activity going on here, potentially. There could be without, but the way uh, the way he handled it, he provides bags, clean farm bags, yeah. at the transfer station. You got them in there, take them. Yeah, that's pretty. Take pretty them back to where they came from, and it put. I don't. I'm kind of torn between it. It puts a responsibility back on the dealer to educate the people that he's selling it to, because most half the time they just take off but the jugs don't even know what they're supposed to do with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So we can we can actually this season's almost over, but for next year it might be worth having a meeting with to get this thing resolved, which we should have done. It it just came out of the blue. Yeah. Try it again next spring and Yeah. I'll probably review where it needs to go to. Yeah. Lynette? I don't think it came out of the blue. Sean might have acted like it did, but it did not. They have been talking about this for years already. So they consider it an extended producer responsibility. They want the producers that make the jugs to become more responsible for the way that they're doing it. They encourage the companies to design more sustainable and recyclable products and manufacturing processes, which is why they want it to go back to those companies, right? So from UFA, it needs to go back to uh, like Roundup or whatever that company is, right? And that's what this whole process is. And it's provincially pushed down. Yeah, so. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Kelly. And further to my point, I just went to the website and you can request a pickup and at anywhere. So um, Gemstone Farms can re request clean farms to come out and pick up your jugs. Newell Regional Solid Waste can request a pickup at the site. So. To my point, it is possible. It, no, I'll, I'll put that on the agenda next uh, meeting at the end okay. of this month. All okay. you do is log in and create yourself an account. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The second one I have is, uh, and I need your opinion on this one, is Sewa still treading water, still chasing Danielle Smith around, not catching her. Oops. And. Uh, We'll keep at that, but they're debating right now whether to hire professional lobbyists to the tune of maybe a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. 
And uh, unless you guys direct me differently, I'm going to vote against that and probably recommend that the county get out of Sewa if they're going to waste money like that. And I need some feedback on that. I think we could do almost as good a job ourselves lobbying than to pay professional lobbyists to sit in Edmonton and for that kind of money. It's ridiculous. I would tend to agree with you if I can speak my opinion early on. I agree with you. Yeah, there's a we this is our this is a local thing. This doesn't have big oh, I mean it's it's broader than local, but it doesn't uh, it, it, the decisions on it are going to be pretty local to our province at least. We have more at stake than anybody else because we if it comes through, we get the plant. But uh, as a last ditch effort, to run out and throw a couple hundred thousand dollars as if we haven't had Sewa plastered all over everybody's mind in the last six months, I think is uh, not something we want to be into. Uh, Greg? I agree with you, Neil. And, you know, with, um, with our MLA being the premier, uh, with um, our connections that we can make at RMA and, um, I think it's really important that we that we do our own lobbying on this um, and not pay that significant amount of money for someone just to pad, um, you know, uh, be able to just go to to some of these uh, uh, meet and greets and buy them a drink or whatever. I don't really think it's good use of the money, and I think it's something we can do on our own. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have alternative views or a, a different view than has been spoken. I think you got direction, Neil. Cool, thank you. Uh, the last one I did was Bow River Basin Council right. last week in Calgary. We haven't been there for a year or so. They asked why not. It's not a bad group. Brian DeJean used to go to it. Uh, we're, Erwin Braun used to be chairman of it. Earl Wilson was years ago too. It's a really technical group, especially for the morning session. I was the only one out of when we introduced ourselves that didn't have a degree in chemistry or anything else. Quite a, a bunch of uh, University of Calgary people looking after the river, but they are watching our river really closely. And we are just an extension of the Bow River. Lake Newell is just a little pond on the end of it. And I think it's worth, um, it's only a couple of meetings a year. It's probably worth us keeping uh, a representative there at every meeting. Well, just to chatter, like the, the city of Calgary has a huge water license, but they put 85% of their water back in. And just to chatter around the tables, there's a lot of brainstorming going on about Oh, okay, we're putting 85% back in. What can we do to save all that water? So they're, they're daydreaming things like a huge hydrogen project, which would lap up a big portion of that water. If they took that water, that would impact us. So even just to learn that little bit of info or that there was that kind of thinking going on, I thought it was worth it to uh, to be at the table. Yeah, I agree with you, and thanks for going to that. I, I think yeah, no I'm problem. It's uh, representative. I agree with you. We should try to be there regularly. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should. Okay. Thanks, Neil. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mayors and Reeves Association. Holly attended in Tabor on our behalf. Yeah, I attended for you, Arno. Um, it was actually a very interesting meeting. It was all the Mayors and Reeves of Southeast and Southwest Alberta. Um, attended by uh, four MLAs as well. There was uh, Chelsea Petrovic, Justin Wright, Grant Hunter, and uh, Nathan Newdorf were all there. Um, a couple of interesting things that I heard. Uh, apparently, our bridge files are better than the rest of the province. So in Mark Sanger Bridges, it's apparently we're in good shape. That's what the Transportation Department says. Um, what's interesting is Grant Hunter said that... Uh, you know, I know because you talk about 20 and the number three because that's all going through. And you said, you guys are waiting for announcements. They're coming about more agri-food development. 
Um, and he said, there's more coming, just take some time, there's more coming. And I thought, you know, it's um, be nice if we heard about some announcements coming this way, right? Because it seems to all be down south. Um, Nathan said that um, the LGFF is a priority for the fall. Um, heard about some issues that are different places. Um, out of that, I, oh, and he really brought up to, he wanted people's opinion. He would like to see the government impose restrictions on um, like class, high classes of farmland, uh, like three, four and five or four and five being restricted for solar. And there was uh, some pushback from some people who are saying, no way, uh, you don't touch my personal rights of home saying, no, we need that. So that was just an interesting discussion, how people felt. Um, uh, yeah, so just, just some good discussions. Um, just also from that, I wondered um, who should be going or if we are going to the uh, Alberta Munis in September. I think we should be there given some of the issues they're bringing up. Um, they're going to affect us, right? So we need to be going to going to those and listening to their discussions as well, I think. But I thought actually it was, it was really interesting. I was only one of two people there who wasn't a Reeve or a mayor. So I was uh, sitting in a very classy group. So thanks, Arno. Oh, I don't know about that, but I think, I think thanks, thanks for attending on our behalf. Okay. Um, uh, next one is uh, Adina, New Regional Tourism Association. New Regional Tourism. So, uh, first of all, Craig just wanted me to say thank you to the County of Newell for the use of the barbecue because Piston Broke had a had their first ever pancake breakfast during rodeo and he really did appreciate that. So he wanted me to pass that along. Um, we received a $65,000 grant from Travel Alberta. So that's going to go towards uh, our web page and some of our uh, videos that they're working on to put out there on YouTube. We had a meeting for our um, experience fund development and uh, $4,000 was given to the Downtown Business Association in Brooks. They're going to work on some murals, put up some more murals downtown. Uh, $5,000 went to Swan Down Farms. Um, I, I don't know if anybody's heard about Swan Down Farms, but uh, Jackie Kay is uh, working on some lodging. I think there's a caboose and a log cabin and possibly a trailer that she has, she's setting up on the farm and you can go and have a, a rural experience and also do some flower picking and bird watching. And so we gave her $5,000 towards uh, developing her lodging. And then uh, $1,000 a given was again to Rosemary Canada Day. So that leaves us $15,000 left in her EFD uh, for, to last us until next, the end of March. And then uh, just for information purposes only, because um, I, there's, I don't, there's nothing we could really do about this, but I thought it was an interesting note. So the smaller arenas in the area, Rosemary, Duchess, Tilly, Rolling Hills, they're really working hard to rent their ice in the winter time and they're finding that when they're trying to put on tournaments and Brooks is putting on tournaments that there just is not enough hotel rooms to rent. So uh, Duchess had one book and they had eight teams that had bought in or submitted their money and they had to reduce it to four teams because they didn't have enough hotel space. So that's just an FYI, you know, like I say, I don't, there's nothing we can do about that unless the county wanted to build a home. But anyway, um, so so it's kind of a catch-22. We'd like to see those small, smaller arenas or small town arenas getting used, but it's hard to when there's so much competition. And so that that's about it. Just uh, the rodeo. We talked about the rodeo this weekend, and the, sm the smoke down was well, really well received. And um, yeah, that was it. Thank you, Adina. Just to add to that, I was I went to a barbecue last night at Silver Sage. Was invited. It it was for Ken Newfelt had invited the sponsors of the rodeo. It was quite well attended. A low key event. It was just a barbecue at six o'clock last night for an hour, and he just they just thanked the sponsors, which 
it was partly us too. They really appreciate everything that we've done to try to help support what's going on there. So that's just connected to what you're talking about there. So I thought I'd add that. Thank you. Uh, uh, Matt, please. Uh, just to pick up the Alberta Municipalities Conference uh, yes. comment, um, back at an organizational meeting, administration was directed to draw names from a hat. So that'll be coming to a future council meeting for you, RFD. The names that have been drawn from the hat for uh, this year include, if I can find it, Dan, Adina, Amanda, and Ellen. But Ariana will have a RFD come into a future meeting near you. And that's September 26th to 29th. Yeah. Calgary, Edmonton. What, what are the dates, September 29th? September 26th to 29th, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pep, Holly. Just one thing to add back from my last one, Marion Reeves. I forgot when we were talking about the uh, whole discussion about using farmland for solar. It was strongly encouraged to put uh, in our MDP actually what, if we're gonna consider not having land, you actually have more specifications around quality of land or whatever. So that was a, a specific recommendation for MDPs. Anyway, but on to PEP. So PEP had its AGM in consort um, two weeks ago, Dan and I went up. Um, so uh, Doug Jones was re-elected chair um, and I stayed on as second vice chair. Um, Wanda Dyko is now a member at large. Deborah Reed Mickler went off and uh, somebody else knew it. I can't remember who it was at the moment, but nothing too exciting. Just continuing on with our new executive director. We hope for good things in the upcoming year. Thank you. 55 plus summer games. Yeah, very short report. Um, things are progressing uh, for the summer games uh, nicely. Um, we have a really good group of people um, running this and um, they're gonna go off without a hitch for sure. So that's great. Um, there is uh, the Brooks and area, Lake Newell, um, sorry, Newell County and Brooks area. It's normally pretty consistent that volunteers come forward on a last ditch effort, but they do come forward. So uh, everybody waits till the last minute to, to volunteer. So if you have some time getting going into that time in August that the games are here, I encourage us all to, to, uh, to volunteer for that. That would be very much appreciated from the, because um, it's a significant number of volunteers that we need. Thanks, Greg. I think that's it for committee reports. And that takes us close to the end of our agenda, but uh, we do have in camera, someone make a motion that we move in camera. Holly, all in favor? That's carried, so we will move in camera.